everybody. Okay, so I'm super excited to talk about this topic today, and it's something that has come up a couple times um, in smaller versions of our videos, but um, it's something that I think is probably going to stir a little bit of uh, controversy. Um, maybe not even controversy isn't the right word, maybe a little bit of conversation. So I'm super excited to put it out there, and, um, and we'll see where it goes. So... Um, <clears throat> It has been talked about pretty often, and, and ironically, this is, is coming up in a time where I happen to have a senior in high school. My, uh, my senior is not an athlete. Um, she, she has other extracurriculars, so she's not an athlete. Actually, neither one of my kids are. Um, however, uh, I am a high school athletics coach, so um, I live in this environment very uh, daily. Um, but it actually surfaced um, while I was listening to some training um, by multiple professional athletes. So um, the topic arises um, and, and transfers very easily into the business world where we have um, young people that are from high school to college. So they, they make this transition. And then even from college to professionalism that they are they are the best in their class, right? Um, and then they go to college and they have to sort through the fact that whether it be athletics, top of their class in academics, top whatever it was, now they are in a sea of people who are also the best. And it is a cause to have to level up quick and the same thing with uh, professional athletes right so um, if you went to college and you were drafted or maybe even pulled right out of high school and right to professional athletics there is no well I was the best in my class or I was you know whatever you're all the best there is no um, you know well I, I'm better than you you're all the best so there is a need for a um, your identity that used to potentially be locked in with being that person in your school or being that person in your class or being that that you know kind of head honcho type of personality. It doesn't exist where you now have found yourself. So. Your ego is about to take a massive hit. And the only differentiator that you have at that point is grace and leadership. Hard work, for sure, but everybody's there for hard work. And my um, experience in the professional world is the only thing that does that stands out at that point is your unwillingness to work hard because that's not success that's failure and you're about to fall by the wayside so I think the topic here is what are you willing to do while you are a high performer or if you are raising a high performer if you are in the um in the company of a high performer, grandparents, friends, uh, you're somebody's best buddy, you're, you know, whatever, and, and you know a high performer, or you, or you are that person, what are you doing to not so much stroke their ego that, hey man, you're the best, but help them also become a leader? Become inside someone who has the gracefulness to not pull out their ego every time they want something done, but understand what it takes to make things happen. So let's put this just in a little bit of perspective. Um, <clears throat> let's talk about locker rooms. Everybody knows if you've ever been in one, um, even if just in gym class in high school, locker rooms are rough, they're horrible. They just are, there's no room for air in a locker room. 
However, if you are somebody in, um, in a leadership position, you should be able to give a pep talk. You should be able to pull together a team. You should be able to have some leadership qualities. If you are drawn inside yourself though, um, it's just as easy to put your head down, focus on yourself, sit there, prep for your own game, and not say anything. There's nothing wrong with that. However, that can be perceived as kind of a snobbish, you know, um, oh, well, he's too good for me. She doesn't have anything to say. Um, she doesn't want to be helpful. Um, perception rather than them being comfortable enough to stand up and say, hey, listen, this is what we're going to do. This is what we should do. And taking a leadership uh, role in a large group of extremely high achievers. That fine line between uh, that conversation, that fine line inside ourselves, the conversation, internal dialogue being, well, you know, I don't want to sound, I don't want to sound like I'm gloating. I don't want to sound like I feel like everybody's going to think I know what I'm talking about versus, hey guys, come on, we can do this. We're the leaders, you know, whatever. And some of that has to do with tenure, but as we surround a high performing friend, child, ath um, you know, athlete that we're coaching, anything, to build someone's identity up and allow that internal dialogue to be, be uh, somewhere between egotistical and graceful. We have that same thing in professional in in the professional world, right? Um, high performing salesperson, um, they may need that ego to be able to go out and do their job, but if their peers. Where is the fine line between, oh, pff, I crushed you in your numbers. Oh, you're nothing like me. Oh, or, hey, I got it. Yeah, here, let me help you. Let me see how quickly that, yes, I sold more than you, but I can help you. I can, we can do this together. That dialogue changes so quickly. So what we see modeled in an athletics situation so quickly turns into, a mirror for a professional situation. So then what we see is high school athletes, we see the kind of cream, re cream rise to the top. They may choose to go on to college athletics or they end up in the professional world and then can take those same skills on. Let's say they do go to the college um, level of sports. They don't go professional, where are they going? They're going right into the professional world. And those same skills will uh, will apply in the professional world. It will always behoove us to encourage really anyone, but especially kids that have the propensity to, and I say kids, anyone, young athletes, uh, college kids, pr protégés, even, even maybe some of our older uh, peers to find that fine line between ego and grace. There always is going to be a need for us to sometimes get our ego out. Our ego sometimes is what we need to drive us into an uncomfortable zone. But the grace side of ego is where we will find leaders rise to the top when situations get uncomfortable. And it will be what differentiates um, in a room full of high achievers, those that have the willingness to stand up and unify a message. Um, so I would love to hear what everyone's comments are on this. I know it's a highly controversial topic, especially if you've been in that situation. I was a high school athlete, um, not on any like huge, I was not crushing anything. I was there to participate and, and buy some time in high school. Um, and I never, I never took those skills anywhere other than into the professional world. Now getting to coach young people like I do and coach professionals like I do, it's amazing to see 
um, when we, we can notice the correlation between those who played sports when they were younger and those who maybe didn't. Um, so uh, take a moment with any young athletes that you know uh, and maybe uh, encourage them to take step up and take that leadership role. Um, any young athletes that you know are really struggling, um, I would encourage you to give them a, a pep talk with, for a little bit of grace. Um, when that ego starts to really rise to the surface and put out in the world what they're hoping that they can get back. Um, and next time you see a, a professional athlete really uh, maybe going rogue where we can all see it, um, you know, I, I tend to ask myself, so maybe even ask yourself, where, where did they push out any grace in a situation? Um, because I, I start to wonder if it's um, where it's at. We all know it's in there somewhere, but where was their courage to push out a little bit of grace um, in a rough situation when they know they have a, a high-end platform? So uh, that's your challenge for today, and I hope everybody has a fantastic day. Um, I can't wait to hear everybody's thoughts. Hope you took a little moment today to breathe life in. Have a great day, everybody.